Hey everyone, I'm Rory, the product manager for Mari, and uh, I'm here to give you all a product update on uh, Mari. So to begin with, I'd like to uh, touch on what we've accomplished since uh, uh, Seagraph 2018. In the last year, we've had two uh, major Mari updates. Uh, for Mari 4.2 finally brought the uh, long-requested mirror projection painting system, coming with full mirror plane control, allowing the artist to paint two sides of any symmetrical object in half time. Now, did everybody know this was in Mari now? Show of hands, yes? In fact, how many Mari fans do I have in the audience, or is it all just a ton of people? Ah, excellent, got some support, that's great. <laughs> Uh, in March, our biggest release for years is Mari 4.5, which introduces the new Mari material system, enabling artists to make quick work of high volume assets by rapidly blocking out their look uh, using material presets. Now you can design material presets using Mari's powerful no graph. Here we take advantage of our existing gizmo system to allow material designers to expose uh, customized controls to drive key areas of the material look. As you can see here, no graph on the left and the canvas in the middle there. So alternatively, if you don't want to design materials by hand and you have an existing library of uh, 50 base rendering texture maps, you can use our material ingest tool. And this tool scans your file system for texture maps uh, with uh, PBR naming conventions and converts these uh, texture maps into Mari material presets which can be instantly applied to your projects. As Mari's material system is driven by the shader model of your shader, we reached out to all render engine vendors uh, and ask if it would be able for them to contribute a Mari approximation version of their software shaders, which now mutual customers could use to design their materials with. So Mari 4.5 released with the Arnold standard surface from Autodesk, which helps close the gap, uh, the look development loop between Arnold and Mari, uh, uh, Arnold in Mari and Katana. So on the left is a Mari viewport render, and on the right is a Katana uh, Arnold full software render. And look pretty close to me, it's great. Uh, in upcoming Mario releases, we shall see similar vendor contributed shaders for uh, V-Ray and 3 d uh, while RenderMan team are shipping a pixel surface approximation shader as part of their uh, Mari uh, for Random, uh, RenderMan for Mari toolkit, which they'll be distributing with RenderMan. So Mari 4.5 really takes a huge step toward making Mari the complete painting package for hero assets, backgrounds, and everything in between. So moving on, I'd like to show you uh, some features which you should expect to see in upcoming Mari versions. So with the material system, we're encouraging artists to take advantage of Mari's incredibly powerful MoGraph uh, uh, system for material designing. So we've taken uh, steps to improve the user experience. So we've replaced the previously deranged auto node layout logic we had with a new method, which uh, to increase the readability of merge node chains and complex networks, where we have uh, merge nodes form a backbone of the layout. All nodes are now collapsible with three states, expanded, collapsed, and connected only. These can be cycled by either clicking the button on the right-hand side of the node or by pressing the tilde shortcut key to cycle them through the various states. Additionally, the multi-channel nodes that uh, power the material system will have an additional stream collapsed state, which will drastically reduce the visual clutter with the new very tall multi-channel merge nodes that will be introduced in Mari 4.5. So all in all, your node graph should look a lot cleaner. Does anyone here actually use NoGraph in Mari? Excellent. <laughs> if you haven't used NoGraph in Mari, I really hope you guys will have given it a try in that upcoming release. It really is kind of the true power of Mari. So next step in uh, Mari's material system is we're introducing geochannels. Now geochannels are name slots on your object where you can import reference mesh specific bake maps like curvature or ambient occlusion data. Geochannel layers or nodes can be, then be pointed to these named geochannels to create an implicit link between the two, allowing you to inject these mesh maps to any point in your project. Geochannel nodes can be embedded into material presets, allowing you to design smart materials that drive their look from mesh maps like curvature and ambient occlusion. Like in this briefcase example, there's a material that layers leather over chipboard and then uses the curvature geochannel to reveal the chipboard only around the convex areas of the model, which is a much more realistic look to, the, to, the, uh, to the, the material preset. So additionally, for NoGraph users, we've extended the bake point node to sync its baked image set to a geochannel. This allows bake points to act as a transmitter to all receiving geochannel nodes using the same alias. As you can see there, bake point and all the nodes above are all like receiving the same uh, result of that bake. This workflow allows you to create a mask uh, 
a mask graph, bake its results, and then have it instantly sync across your project, even within nested groups, removing the spaghetti of shared node noodles forever, which is, in my opinion, fantastic. So looking forward, we've been investigating uh, industry trends, and with the push of premium TV, uh, TV uh, streaming series and bigger temple films, we've seen an increase in demand for a higher volume of CGI assets at the same high quality, but with no additional budget. So an artist's time is becoming more demand than ever before, which is why automated workflows are becoming more necessary to reduce artist workloads for repetitive tasks, such as uh, setting up a project or exporting files into the pipeline. So with Mari 4 series, we've been on a path to address these demands for automation. From Mari 4.0's Python-based export manager to Mari 4.5's material system, these all connect together to allow the automation of the LookDev pipeline which allows artists to spend more time making creations like this and less time enduring death by pop-up when exporting files. And don't worry, this gem of exports experience is kind of replaced in Mari 4, but this is, this is what it used to be. Uh, so one of the key elements of automation is pipeline integration, which could include integration into an asset management system. With Mari's new material format, we did an experiment with Mari 4.5's API to see if we could integrate Mari's materials into Shotgun. So here are the results of that experiment. Uh, this is how Mari materials would now appear in the Shotgun multi-publish tool interface. And this is how the Mari materials would appear in Shotgun's web front end. And finally, here is the process of applying Shotgun version control of Mari materials onto selected regions of your assets without having to preload them into Mari shelf, all the materials being version controlled by Shotgun's infrastructure. Now after this experiment went so well, we thought, how far could we push this shotgun integration in the context of automating the first pass of look development? So if you look at a traditional look dev workflow, you may start with an asset that has an artboard, which has various regions of the, uh, the model kind of designated for different material types. To execute this direction, the artist could work across three different applications to achieve a first pass of look dev, Maya to model an UV, Mari to paint, and Katana to light and render a turntable, or requiring an artist's time to manually set up each stage of this process. So what if, for the first pass of the the artist would use Maya to also assign placeholder shaders, uh, then uh, push one button for Ma uh, Mari to apply these materials in the same place and export the texture maps, get them to Katana, render a template, and have each step published into Shotgun. So here's a demo of what we achieved, with the Python APIs already available across these applications and Shotgun. First, we used a custom Shotgun action for the existing Mari material publish type we made earlier, to assign placeholder blend shaders to the Maya model and use the thumbnails to drive the, like, the baseline look for a preview. Then from the Shotgun web front end, we can find our published limit cache and launch a Mari Python tool with the Shotgun context driving the model we want to apply auto, uh, automated look dev to. Once triggered, the script uses Maya's shader face assignments to apply Mari materials of the same name to the limit cache, correctly mask them to the assigned faces and then Mari exports these channels to EXR, texture maps, and Pythonically configures a Katana template project and renders a turntable, resulting in all of the texture maps, Mari archive, the Katana project, and then the render turntable all being published into Shotgun and populating the, the front end. So this would save a lot of time of, of the artists, uh, of, save a lot of the artist's time in Mari and Katana, where they wouldn't actually have to go in there at all to get that first pass completed. And this could even be run on a script uh, on multiple assets in execute mode on the GPU-powered render farm to order look to have a collection of assets. And as we have everything published in Shotgun, when notes are received from an asset review session, an artist can open the Mari archive and iterate the look dev in Mari, and then send the updated texture maps back down to Katana, where the artist could use the full power of Katana to refine the look dev for final approval. Enabling workflows like these really allow Mari to become the heart of your look development pipeline, making Mari the complete painting package for heroes, backgrounds, and everything in between. Thank you very much. <laughs>